Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, so episode one, all right, uh, of a series of, uh, of interviews and talks we're going to do from uh, from the gym here at, at Iron and Blood Strength and Conditioning. Um, haven't quite decided on a title yet. We're we're uh, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm split between uh, the barbed wire mind and uh, the iron conversation. So uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I, I've still not decided on it yet. I may listen. I might not. So it may be something completely fucking different. So, uh, but uh, episode one, regardless, regardless of whatever this ends up being called, um, and uh, I am here with none other than my brother and very good friend, six-time world champion, Joel Blanton. Joel, welcome, brother. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, uh, so let's let's run down the list real quick. We were doing this. We were doing this before we started recording. Um, six-time world champ, but that's not it. So let's uh, let's let's go through the uh, let's go quickly brush through the list of accomplishments, grappling and jujitsu wise. First, uh, several times Chicago Open champion, but um, five Nogi World Championships uh, in, in in Masters division and. Uh, one gi champion world championship and then seven no gi pants championships. Awesome. So you've you've been spent a little time on the mats. A little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> you and I have known each other for years long and time. met long time and met through uh, combat sports. We fought on an MMA, MMA card together. Yeah, my first fight, we were on the same card. Yep. We were on. Yep. And it was uh, it was an interesting <laughs> fucking oh, evening man. to say the least. I think that promoter got sued. Yes, got some guy got his leg broken, and they didn't have any uh, medical no personnel there or insurance. But um, it's no good. No, it's no good. But uh, and, and we fought tournament style. Then still, so it was uh, more than one fight in the night. But mine usually. was a feature. Got changed to a feature about that night, so I only had to fight once. Yeah, but yeah. He was forty pounds heavier than me. So yeah, yeah. It never made a difference anyway. Yeah, the shit was weird back then <laughs> and, and fun. I, I, you know, I, 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 I'd, I'd only be interested in it again if it became completely ridiculous again like that but um but anyway uh so you and i both moved to purely grappling uh for the sake of of maintaining our, our beautiful faces and uh and our good looks our, our charming good looks <laughs> yeah. that we developed over the years so exactly. give me a little background um how did you get into how'd you get into uh into grappling and and jujitsu um i'm sure that jujitsu wasn't first correct no um I was a standout wrestler in high school. Uh, I only ever wrestled in high school. But uh, afterwards, you know, I, I started picking up weightlifting, got into powerlifting, put on a lot of weight uh, over the years, and I got actually got into pro wrestling nice. for a while. Nice. And uh, we went to set up for integrated fighting mm -hmm. years ago for one of their shows at the Bingo Hall, and we got set up to set up to ring and hang out for the night and then tell the ring at the end of the night and the first fight I was like wow people are really doing this this is amazing so I talked to a guy and then it just it took off from there um, a few months later I met a guy that who would fight fought previously in one of the local towns here in Indiana uh, talked to him I got a phone number three weeks later I was training and I never looked back you know I, I trained for six months before I took my first fight I ended up having 33 total fights and then just changed, you know, Father Time was undefeated. You know, I was 39 in my last fight, so, you know, just kind of kind of take it as it goes and right. transition over to pure grappling, which I've been, I've had a, some really awesome success, so trying to carry that over, so. Yeah, yeah. Would you say that the, that the transition to grappling was a, um, was well-timed? As far as how how the sport changed and commissions got involved, and would you say that it was a, you got out at the right time with yeah, MMA? Yeah, I, I like to say that I fought before when it, before it was the cool thing to do. Right. Um, I believe it was a, back when it was in HB. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, To me, it was a more pure time. I mm -hmm. guess you know maybe that's just old school thought, but I, it was a more pure time. You know, we just fought. We, there was no agenda. We fought just because it was it, we wanted to test ourselves or prove ourselves against other people, and it was just there was just there was no agenda to it. We just fought for the sake of fighting, right? And it was it was it was a it was an insane but glorious time. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I remember. I remember back then. <clears throat> there were so many shady weigh-ins and um, rules change changing, at opponents minute, changing at the last minute and shit. And I mean, we were fucking fighting <clears throat> for 
going out of state and fighting for like 200 bucks for like yeah. 200 to show 200 to win. Yeah. You know, um, and wide f- open rules. Yeah. Wide open rules. And I remember, I remember fucking Dave, I remember fighting for Dave Strasser, uh, best rule set in the United States history. Oh yeah. Up in Wisconsin. <clears throat> and I remember part of, I remember fighting for two to sh- 200 to show 200 to win. Uh, I fought for him a couple times. I fought Nick Thompson actually for him twice. Oh, the, goat. the goat who actually went on to have like some really awesome Nick, you're a fucking great guy, by the way. He was fucking one of the <laughs> one of the nicest guys I ever fucking fought. It was 200 to show, 200 to win, and then all the White Castle you could eat. <laughs> Strasser put us up in these in these uh, these like cheap motels, which we were we were happy to have. We didn't care. And I remember him feeding me white, just standing there with these big bags of White Castles, just like feeding me, you know. And he looked like powder, like he was like real like animated and crazy looking. You know, he was bald and you know like Strasser was a he was a unique it's individual. A, one of the best shows. Oh yeah, it was a great show. But yeah, I remember I, I remember having uh, I remember eating White Castle until I because and I. Don't don't even like White Castle. It fucks with my guts real bad. But I, I wanted to be polite. And I remember eating White Castle long past I was full. And he just kept handing these White Castles. And I was eating the White Castle. But that, anyway, not to get too far off subject. But those days, you'll never see again uh, with yeah. MMA. Uh, and I feel like um, I got out around the same time you did and switched over to grappling, purely grappling. Uh, I think you might have gone a little longer than me. Um, but... I uh, I felt like I got out at the right time. It it uh, it was it was no longer enjoyable getting getting uh, getting soccer kicked in the head by twenty year old kids who live in the gym. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, I'm not, I just want to be grappling. Uh, you know, it was it was the right time for me anyway to get out. Absolutely. Um, I had actually looked for another fight for a little while, especially after the first Pam's title. I started actually looking for a fight again. And depending on who you talk to, they just couldn't find me a fight. Mm-hmm. I was fully convinced that somebody out there wanted to punch me. So, right. But <clears throat> it is what it is. And, you know, I just gave it up and just decided to, to stay on top of jujitsu full time and just really, really press it and see how good I could do. Right. And see how good I could be. Which I feel like most of my, speaking for myself, uh, <clears throat> most of my of my deepest most meaningful uh relationships that have come through martial arts has been through grappling specifically and i don't know if yeah. that i don't know if that is is because you're it, it, it's just a tactile thing like you're so intimately touching constantly you're so close with people constantly you're sweating and bleeding together constantly um you know it, for some reason i feel like my tightest relationships didn't come necessarily they might have started with MMA but they really developed and flourished with grappling involved well the, you know that in growing older and realizing and understanding and respecting what you've been through um, and and why you were doing it that and I, I think the, the bond with the training partners is that you know when we when we when we really get at each other you know, we, we're showing each other who we are and what we can take. It's a very primal thing. Right. You know, it's down to the core, the core of, of being the most human you can be. You know, just going to, you know, you're, you're basically an unarmed combat. So, and I, and I think that really strikes at a normal, at a really closeness. And then you have a friendship on top of it, you know, like we have, we, we get at each other when we, when yeah. we go. Yeah, we rolled, so, the, we rolled the, <laughs> we rolled the, we rolled the first roll of the day for Hatsu Gecko today was you and me. Yes. Yeah. You know, you, we get at each other, but that we show each other who we are. And then that there comes a built a big respect off of it. And I think that's where the bond comes in because I understand what kind of person you are because you've showed me what kind of person you are. That's interesting. I, I, I like your your uh, I like your perspective on that. Uh, we show each other who we are. Yeah. But it makes a lot of sense. It's, it's, fighting it's exactly is, right. Fighting is a very primal thing. Why do you think so many people think that they know how to do it? You know, on Sundays, you can go to B-dubs on Sunday and see guys watching football, and no one thinks that they can go in there, no matter if they got their shirt on or not. No one thinks that those dudes can, and none of those guys can think that they can go in and throw a pass. Right. If you go in on a Saturday night during a pay-per-view, there's 10,000 fucking tough guys in there that they can all fight. Right. Because fighting is very primal. Everybody thinks that they can do it because it's a very, it's a very, it's a very, uh, 
innate very soulful thing right to have, to be able to do that and guy, especially guys because most guys are are fucking ego driven right and everybody thinks that they're fucking can fight but not everybody can fight no this is true <laughs> no uh, not everybody can everybody should maybe well, at some yeah, point. They, uh, they yeah. Absolutely, every man should it, it if, should take a punch in the face yeah if you've never been punched in the face something's fucking wrong with you go well <laughs> go make make a point of it you know there, there's a lot of wisdom in fight club um how the fuck you know anything about yourself if you've never been punched You're in the face yeah Go make, get punched in the face. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, you will either find that you are uh, tougher than you thought you were or not as fucking tough as you thought you were. Uh, either way, it will change you as a human being. Nothing wrong with getting punched in the face. Uh, I, at this point, I'm, I, you know, I'm content doing a lot of grappling. Uh, yeah. I still like to spar every once in a while, but mm-hmm. it's not, a, it's not a, a lot thing. But uh, I still like to put on the gloves and, and bang around just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is something to periodically taking, taking some punishment. And, uh, you, you know, your your punch, your punch is one of the last, what I've noticed if I haven't spar boxing for for quite a while, uh, my punch is still there. Um, my being comfortable taking punches, I have to warm <laughs> back up into that. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm fucking, you know, uh, it, it's discombobulating. So uh, that muscle that uh, getting punched in the face and shrugging it off and being comfortable muscle is something you have to, uh, that you have to exercise. You know, I still have people ask me on occasion, especially, you know, you know, living down in Tennessee, still a lot of people around me are, are still new to me and, and, and ask about, you know, my MMA background and, you know, how, how could you, how can you fight? You know, you're going to get punched. Well, it's like, you know, you're going, you know, you, uh, you just accept the fact at the time, you know, you accepting the fact that I'm going to get punched. Yes. I'm going to get kicked. I'm, this is where we're getting ready to fight. So it's a trade off. You you just completely understand what you're getting yourself into. This is potentially could happen and I'm putting myself at risk. But that's how fucking legends make. That's how people fucking tell stories about you. And, and then and For sure. get out and you're living and you're really living life. For sure. If you have the, if you have your choice, go get punched by someone you trust, <laughs> rather than yeah, rather than no some shit. rather than some asshole with a fucking pair of brass knuckles in his hands at a gas station. That can happen as well, but you know, uh, maybe do the, maybe do the gloves thing first. Maybe get ahead of it. You know, uh, learn how to take a punch first. Uh, but anyway, it, we're we're sliding into we're, it, we're sliding into a different topic, yeah. which is mindset. Mindset is, is something that I um, that I'm a little obsessive about because I feel that a lot of the amazing things that people are able to do physically start with the mind, whether that's in business, whether that is uh, in athletics, whether it's just, you know, in any facet of life, I I feel like all that starts with a mindset. So uh, I wanted to ask you, you, you're a, you're a, one of the things I love about you is you're a very, uh, you're a, a very strong-minded dude, um, not a closed-minded dude, uh, actually pretty open-minded and open to learning new things, um, but a strong-minded guy. So um, I wanted to go into your mindset a little bit. Um, what is your, you know, what is your mindset in life, in training, and and, and then um, and then I, I want to know how that how it's evolved over the years. Where did you start, and where was it at, and uh, and what did you have to correct over the years? It was, it was a lot of a learned thing. I, I knew I had confidence and I knew I had some ability, but uh, I would say it was after, after the first bands when I, was, when I was able to go back and I won in 13 my division and then I won the Open. And uh, Mick Williams sent me a screenshot because they, they give you a ranking in your, in your belt in your weight class, you know, and at, at the time I was, after that tournament, he sent it to me and I was ranked third in the world. I remember getting that, division. I remember getting that yeah. screenshot. Yeah, because yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I texted you, I was like, holy shit, check yeah. this out. So in my in my very first thought was, what do I got to do beating number one? How can I get to, how can I be number one? So I knew Nogi Worlds was coming up, uh, I struck a deal with uh, somebody that I was training with at the time. 
he bought a package of tri- privates all at once, and I had my I had my trip paid for, and went out and won my first and second world championship. And after that, was like, okay, now now let's see what else I can do. Let's just push the pace. And so I just it, it was obsessive. I was you know I was working a crazy job hour job. I was on a fast rotating swing shift, and I still got in six days a week. And I didn't you know I did other stuff too. Not just it, it wasn't just the jujitsu and the wrestling that I worked on. It was I was doing a lot of like ladder exercises, uh, a lot of a lot of conditioning and conditioning, yeah. and, and so I could keep going and going and going. And if you don't. If you don't believe, you can. There's a difference between having confidence going into something and believing beyond anything else in existence that you can win. That is that is powerful. People, you know, you can lie to yourself. You're not going to get away with it because you know you're full of shit. You know you're lying to yourself. Yeah. But you can say, yeah, I want to win this, but it's but it's but it's soft hearted. But when you when you convinced with everything in, in your in your being that you can win it's it's very powerful you know we talked about visualization and I use I still use visualizations really really heavy before I ever get to the tournament I've seen my matches a thousand times in my head right you know everything I do we, we talk about um, um, an approach to excellence um, even before I get on a mat to practice for training on the way in I have an order to what I'm doing. You have a ritual. I have, yeah, I have a ritual. Gotcha. I go through everything is done step by step by step by step, and I do the same the step the best I can every time. That way, I'm I have excellence ever before I ever step up on a mat for training. And excellence breeds excellence because if I'm doing if I'm taping my fingers, if I'm taking the time to take my fingers correctly, I should be drilling correctly. I'm tying my belt correctly. I'm drilling correctly. Now I'm rolling correctly. Right. So I just start with the real little things and I go through a little ritual every time. It's the same thing. And when I arrive at a tournament, it's the same thing. I have a preset ritual building up to stepping on the scale, stepping off the scale and going to the map for my match. Everything is done intentionally and in a very strict manner. But it's led to success because I do everything really good. Before I ever get out of that. Right, right. So you start, it's it's like the, uh, I want to get my life together. I want to hit these goals. Um, you know, start by making your bed. And I've heard that, you know, Jordan Peterson said it, but I've heard it before. Um, start by making your bed. Every day. Make your fucking bed. Make your bed and make that a ritual. You clean up that part of your life. Every morning you wake up, you make your bed. You know, and that's, uh, and, and I've heard that from, from a lot of successful people. Uh, you know, make your bed, and uh, you know there's a that's a literal and philosophical making of your bed. Yeah, because there's a there's a first there's a concrete thing right there, boom, at the beginning of the day, and then it just spreads from there. Mm-hmm. Every movement is intent. You know, that's how we get. Um, you know, before we ever press a kettlebell overhead, you have to learn how to clean it correctly. And sloppy cleans lead to sloppy fucking presses. You know, so, so you have to hinge before you can clean, before you can press. Yes. So everything, everything's done the same way every time. We try to standardize everything. We try to make everything crisp with intent. And it's every movement is a tiny ritual. And that's the way I see weight training, kettlebell training, uh, jujitsu, anything like that. Every, every movement is a small ritual. Uh, beyond the rituals that you do before you ever go and do those things. Yes. Like you said, how you tape your hands every time, uh, how you warm up, how, you know, the things that you do, the, the thoughts that you project, uh, the mantra in your head, it's all ritual. It, and that leads to every movement you make being ritual, which, le- which leads to, you know, uh, magic in the match or yeah, magic it, in, the, it, in the workout it, yeah, or whatever changes, you're doing. It changes everything. You know, we have our goal out here, but we have all these micro steps we have to get to before we get to the goal. Yeah. And it's okay. Just take your time and hit one after another, and then it, 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 it changes. It changes. Yeah. Uh, Paul Wagner talks about ritual a lot. I think Paul yeah. has a, uh, has a uh, freakishly developed and uncanny 
attitude and understanding of ritual and working the will. Uh, and, you know, it, he's had a lot of influence on me uh, mentally and philosophically. Um, and his work with Operation Werewolf has been uh, it, tremendous. I think it's a valuable, valuable thing. And, and uh, you, you and I, you and I both are uh, are, are connected with yeah. that. I, we're both, uh, you know, we're both uh, followers of that of that ethos and programming. So, so tell me about tell me about your 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 uh, discovery of uh, Operation Werewolf and your relationship with it and what it's done for you in your life. It started uh, just by having my notes in a book in the first place. Uh, it came up as suggested reading a body. It was uh, Complete Transmissions, uh, Volume 1. Uh, and we read it, splaced through it, immediately emailed Paul. Hey, man, I do jujitsu. I'm a black belt. Right. Love to get together sometime. And it just it just took off from there. And then uh, got the got the invited, went out to Old Fine, uh, got to hang out, got to go through ritual. Uh, you know, and it, and it, and it is, it's, it's, it's very powerful, uh, very primal. And I think that, that appeals to like, you know, guys that, that, that need the out, that have, they need to have something like that in their life. You know, it, it being so unstructured and unattached to a lot of things for a lot of times, and then having something that you can relate to and is, uh, powerful you for it. And it, it, it uh, it's a good thing. No, it's I, awesome. I agree. I agree. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, a lot of the ethos and, and tenets of, of Operation Werewolf are are 100% what men need. 100% what men need, uh, whether they know it or not. Uh, they need yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a superficial, shallow degenerate nothing society that, that that has consumer based society which is what american culture has become unfortunately um we have lost that that brotherhood and tribalism and um and and really like male intimacy which you know you know not not in a not in a fucking gay way but like <laughs> you know what i mean like but in a, in it's, a, a, it's okay to, be, to tell my brother that I love him. Yeah, yeah, you know? and and to, and to mean it, and and to not and to not call you my brother. Like uh, I don't call everyone my brother. You know what I mean? Or, or call every you know. Getting brought up all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but to, to but to call you my brother and mean it, um, because you know we have touched on some deeper truths together and gone through some things together. I can rely on you. You can rely on me. And, I, and you know. Operation Werewolf is a, is a has been a fantastic community. Been a very it's been connecting, a connective network. For those, yeah. Yes. For those that see the you know the yeah. fire in the night. Yeah, and, and, you know, and, and you and I, I think, gravitated quickly toward that because of our background with martial arts and grappling. I mean, it, you know, essentially, um, that's that's exactly what we both got out of that as well. You yeah. Know? You and I were brothers before. Yeah, we've been having weird conversations for years. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you and I, you and I were brothers before before Operation Werewolf, but that really just that we were able to go on that kind of on that journey together. Trip you know together, what I mean? And first, it's first trip out there. Yeah, and it's been a great extension uh, of the relationship we already had. Yes, um, and, and not to say that it's it, that it's uh, it's only good for guys, but it's because it's fucking fantastic for women too. I think that I feel sorry for women in in modern society, a modern. Western society, especially, um, that tells them that there's no difference between men and women, that there's, uh, you know, that, you know, they can have everything with no consequence and, and, you know, they don't have to have honor. And, uh, I don't, uh, I don't think that's been good for women. You know, I think that it discounts hasn't been good for anybody. Hasn't been good for anybody. And I think that, I think that when you shit all over what, what should be important to men, um, you're also shitting all over what should be important to women, um, and what makes it what makes a man a, a good man and good at being a man. Um, you know, as much as there is that, there's also there's also uh, you know what makes a woman a good woman and good at being a woman. Yeah. And I think that that's been eroded too. And I think that um, I think that that in in some ways women have it worse than we do because. 
men men that subscribe to this this uh you know as as Jack Donovan calls the empire the fucking bonobo masturbation society uh you know what happens to men is they just become feminized men um which which makes them you know uh which makes them really kind of shitty women in a way but what what happens to women is i think it really crushes it really crushes their their spirit you know because they have nowhere to go yeah they have nowhere to go i knew i knew when i was when i was different when when i started noticing uh guys in the supermarket when we go in and they would do it they would just be dead and you know they weren't doing anything outside of outside of what they're allowed to do right you know but they, you know because they were dead inside they, they were okay pushing a cart around you know that they they don't have they, were, they weren't really living for anything and i'd never wanted to be that dead to feel that dead inside no i wanted to have, still have a bit of have a passion because you know, I would say that was one of the things that helped me. You know, like with the grappling, also, it's, it's having a passion and being having just fucking being on fire for what you want to do, man, and being and remember that you're choosing to you chose to be there and make the best of it while you're there, right. even if it's even if it's miserable that day. You still went in, you still crushed it, still go in and do what you're supposed to do, just yeah, because you're fucking supposed to. And, and, and keep the fire burning because the next day you'll feel all right and you'll be ready to go again and you can knock the fuck out of it even harder than you did the day before so just staying on top of things but i never wanted to i never wanted to lose that fire even even now i want to be 70 if i live to be 70 i still want to have that i want to be that ugly looking grandpa that you don't just don't fucking grab a hold of right right <laughs> i still want to have the fire in my you know, I might have a bad hip and a cane, but you know, don't bother Grandpa. He's going to kick your ass. Well, and, and there's that, that that old story about Jack Dempsey. You ever hear that story about Jack Dempsey? Got mugged when he was in his 60s and knocked these two dudes the fuck out because they happened to fucking they happened to fucking mug Jack Dempsey's old ass, which is a bad fucking idea. You know, and whether that's true or not, it's something I always heard, but I want to believe it's true. If it's not true, then fuck it. It's true to me. It's a goddamn legend. It doesn't have to be true. But, right. but, you know, but I always heard that that was true that, you know, uh, that, you know, that somebody tried mugging these guys, tried to mug Jack Dempsey when he was, you know, when he was like in his sixties and he was like, not today, motherfuckers, you know, which is awesome. And that's, uh, you know, there's a, there's no reason to not be that guy. You couldn't do that to a 21 year old now. And put him in the same situation. Even have one guy running up on a twenty-one-year-old and him defend himself like he needs to, right? Because of the change in the way everything has. Let us know what should we expect from Joel Blanton in two thousand eighteen. Since today is day one of two thousand eighteen, so what should we expect from you this year, Joel? Um, been banked up a little bit, so I'm trying to work around that um, through. Starting with you, guidance with the May stuff, and then you know Greg adding uh, his wisdom as well. Um, I'm starting to feel a lot better and making just. I'm ready to compete again. So nice. As long as uh, physically I stay smart and stay sharp and uh, stay on top of things, just as compete as much as I can. Compete against everybody. No, you know, a lot of people say you know they want to go and compete a lot. But, it, you know, the thing about it is, you know, thinking about it, we should be competing against each other, no matter who that is, you know, without, with, yeah, I, I, and I really don't give it, I, I want to win, but if you get over it, then you fucking earned it, and, and then it's just the end of it. Right. You know, I still go back and go train at the beginning of the week, and we're going to, you know, it's, it's, it's still fine. It's okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, I just, I want to compete. I want to get back and do do some uh, sub only stuff which I've never done before and I think, I think submission would, only correct yeah, for, for, submission yeah. only uh, I think it would be fun it's a lot faster pace and you know with the success success I've had in Nogi how could I not want to try it at least once fuck it why not you know you know uh, the the time limit of the match doesn't exactly help out my from my age but it'll be all right we'll just uh, sharpen up the conditioning <laughs> yeah yeah for, for grandpa speed exactly <laughs> and, 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 and you mentioned as a side note and actually this came to mind earlier when we we're talking about mindset and you just mentioned greg walsh 
Um, and something that Greg says that I think is fucking brilliant. One of the many brilliant things that Greg says. Greg's a Greg's a Greg's something else, man. I, he's I'm gonna I gotta get Greg here uh, or on an interview at some point because uh, Greg is a fucking brilliant dude. Uh, but something that Greg says that I love is uh, remember you chose to be here. Yes. Yeah. You know. And that's, you know, remember, you chose to be here. This isn't being done to you. No victim faces. You know what I mean? You chose to be here. Now fucking do it. Suck it up. Let's get it done. Yeah. Just fucking yeah. do it. For sure. Well, awesome, Joel. Uh, I expect to see big things from you in 2018. And I know that uh, I know that that you are one of the dudes that, that pushes me to be uh, to be a, a better grappler and a better man. So uh, thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, you, too. You know, you're one of my accountables, you know, you know, we do talk about visualization just real quick. When I'm, making, when I'm making the decision, you're one of the guys that's standing in front of me, and I can see that. So it helps. That's it's awesome. another ritual that, that I do, you know, making decisions. Yeah, so it's not just you, you have a council in your head. Yeah, as I well. have a council in I, front of me that, yeah. that, that helps me make decisions throughout the day. So I'm. I do, dude. I, I, it, that's funny you say ego, that. I have the same ego, thing. Your ego drives you to something, and it may not always be the best choice, but when you have. Visually, and you can visually see them. Your the people that hold help hold you accountable in front of you, and you can see them. Then right. it, it, it really changes your your, your course of action consciously. Yeah. So yeah, you're making <laughs> visualize yourself explaining this thing to, to yes. these people. Your 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 Why your the counsel. Fuck did you do this? Yeah, explain no. this. <laughs> pitch this idea to these fucking guys, and then how would they really take it? I mean, I'm glad that I'm not the only person that has that because I have a fucking I have a counsel in my head that you're in. Fucking Paul Wagner is in. I have I have a few guys that in yes. my head. Uh, Michael Childers, you motherfucker, you two. Uh, I have. I have a, 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 a an imaginary council. You guys have been in my head more times than you know that I've had to fucking stand in front of you and fucking and uh, pitch an idea or explain my actions or run something by you. And, uh, you know, it, it gets rid of some of my fucking more harebrained ideas, <laughs> you know, or some of the dumber shit that I thought about doing. Uh, I just in my head, I pitch it to you. So I I do the same thing. I do the same thing. I have an imaginary council that you're on as well. It keeps you it keeps you on the straight and narrow. It does. It does. Well, brother, I appreciate it as I appreciate always. You being here. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And uh, so that's it. Uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time, uh, right here on the old YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.